Hello. Welcome to the replay video series. In this series, you will see a short group of videos that describe the different features of replay. In segment one, the introduction to the graphical interface, we're just going to give a quick tour, show you what's what, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly where to find what it is you're looking for within the UI. This is the landing page or dashboard. It'll land on the first core that you have listed in your left-hand pane. Down this left-hand pane, you can have multiple cores protecting multiple servers. Simply click on File, connect to a replay core to add a replay core. From this one interface, you can manage your entire environment, giving you a single pane of glass view into everything you do in your environment for backup from the Windows platform where replay comes into play. On this main screen, this is essentially your dashboard view, and it shows you your protected servers and a bunch of information about what's happening within the environment, what their last event message was, when the next snapshot's going to happen, and if anything is currently in motion. Expanding a plus sign gives you an indication of what the storage footprint is on the server and how much space it takes to back that server up for the entire span of retention. In this case, I have 82 gigabytes approximately of storage on the SQL server that I'm protecting, and I am squeezing that down with compression and deduplication into about 21 gigs. All right, and that's, again, for the entire span of the retention period. In this case, happens to be one month. On the Replication tab, we show all of the servers that are configured for replication, and this is where you can manage them globally. You can also add servers for replication from here, or you can also do that on the actual servers page. There is an Events tab, and this shows you a global view of events for this particular core server. So you will see all of the corresponding information from the protected servers rolled up into here as well. The last one is Mounted Recovery Points. This will come into play in later discussions. This is where you will be able to see what you have mounted from a recovery point perspective. Um, when I say mounted, it could be mounted as a drive letter or a Windows volume mount point. And we'll come back to that. Clicking on an actual server, I'll click here on my domain controller, I see, again, basic information about this particular server. Here I have an interval, how frequently I back up. Okay. One of the things you'll see that's prevalent throughout the product is the speed at which we can do things. So Replay can do backups incredibly fast, but more importantly, they're incredibly lightweight. Gone are the days of backing up a server and having it only happen at night because it invades the entire environment. Right? Our backups take 1% to 2% of your CPU. They happen all day and all night long. If it's a critical server, most, uh, you know, Installs usually end up with an hour to 30 minutes to 15 minutes for an interval. When you set it for a 15-minute interval, you're getting, an, you're getting 96 snapshots per day. If you have that outage at 6 p.m., roll back to 5.45 instead of losing an entire day's worth of work. Recovery point location, where do we store the data locally? And this can be anything. It could be NAS, uh, SAN attached. It could be direct attached, internal, external. It could be iSCSI. It doesn't make a difference. We have a Recovery Points tab. On the Recovery Points tab, this is the history. So this is where I would go to be able to restore data from any one of my Recovery Points. And then I have a Events tab here as well. This tab is specifically for this domain controller, so I will not see any other information here. On the summary, back on the Summary tab, you have the Volume Details. Volume details just simply shows me individually which volumes I am protecting. And from here, I can go in and I can manually select which volumes I would like. Uh, if I don't want to protect the C drive, for instance, I could just simply uncheck the box. Checking the box automatically checks everything else, and then I can take things out as I want them. Lastly, from here, I could have a snapshot begin automatically, and then there are other components here as well, base image, resync, and we'll cover those in later segments. This concludes the tour of the UI. Thanks. We'll see you in the next video.